ayodhya kand chapter number 86 guha describes to bharata how lakshmana served the lord and guha is recounting the events that took place about a month ago when rama sita and lakshmana and sumantra were at shringabhirpura so far guha has recited how lakshmana did not want to sleep thinking how can he sleep when sita and rama were asleep on the ground lakshmana laments for his father who obtained rama as his son after so many years of pious activities and now lakshmana is certain that king dashratha would no longer stay alive and his lament continues verse 14 vinadya sumaha nadam shramin uparata striya nirgosh uparatam noonam adhy raja niveshanam the ladies of the palace would by now have cried themselves hoarse over us and sleep the sleep of exhaustion and unconsciousness at a quiet ominous and terrible keeps watch over them verse 15 kaushalya chaiva raja chatatha eva janani mama na ashim se yadi te sarve jeeve yu sharvareem imam kaushalya my mother the other royal ladies and my father would ere now have departed for the mansions of the blessed at the worst they would not survive this night verse 16 jeeve dapi hi me mata shatruknasya anvavekshaya dukkhita yatu kaushalya virasur vinashishyati Perhaps my mother may hold on to life to behold her favorite child Shatrughna once again but Kaushalya the mother of their prince of heroes would never survive her son's departure to the woods verse 17 Atikrantam atikrantam anavapya manoratham rajye ramam anikshipya pita me vinashishyati My father King Dasharatha failing to fulfill his cherished desires one after another and unable to place Rama on the throne will certainly pass away verse 18 Siddhartha pita Ram vrittam tasmin kale hi upasthite preta karyeshu sarveshu samskarishyanti bhumi pam When the moment of death arrives for my father those who perform the funeral rites for him would have fulfilled their desire why did lakshmana say something like this because everyone at ayodhya the joy and pride of the world everyone man woman and child was extremely devoted to king dashrath and if they were to hear that he had departed this life wailing and moaning they would not lose a moment in following him wherever he might be rama is the first born of a monarch all graces and excellences vie with one another to find a place in him he lies nearer the heart of our father than any of us the fond father cannot keep his life currents in his body if he is away from rama for a minute It needs no saying that Kaushalya his faithful wife would ever be by his side in this world or in the next and you may be sure to find her friend Sumitra my mother ever in loving attendance upon her I have been blessed with this priceless jewel of a boy after 60000 years of barrenness he has grown to youth and manhood safe and happy He is married to a lady in every way worthy of him. I can safely lay the burden of the state on his shoulders and spend the evening of my life in ease and comfort. Such golden dreams have been rudely shattered and for him life contains nothing to hold him back from the welcome arms of death. O oh, poor soul he has not the consolation of at least hoping to see his son crowned after him at the end of 14 years cruel grief will not spare him so long 
Happy are they who remain with him during his last moments and render him every attention, every possible service. Alas, we are denied that blessing. This is the detailed explanation of the last two verses. Verses 19, 20 and 21. Ramya Chatvara Samsthanam Suvibhakta Mahapatham Haramya Prasada Sampannam Sarva Ratna Vibhushitam Gaja Ashva Ratha Sambadham Turya Nada Vinaditam Sarva Kalyana Sampurnam Krishta Pushta Janakulam Arama Udyana Sampurnam Samaja Utsava Shalini Sukita Vicharishyanti Raja Dhanim Pitur Mama Ah, does the broad earth hold another city as beautiful and resplendent as Ayodhya? Heavy grief weighs down my heart when I recall the well-laid crossings, the straight and beautiful roads, the mansions of the rich, the palaces of the princes and the groves, gardens, conservatories and pleasances. Hybrid courtesans flash through its streets like visions of beauty. Stately chariots, fleet horses and huge elephants throng the ways. Happy sounds and solemn, gentle lay or martial music rise upon the air on every side. Troops of men and women, strangers to disease and sorrow and happily attired, lend an additional charm to the city. The splendor and pomp of the festivals and the holy fanes, the scenes of gaiety and joy in private houses, supremely blessed are they to whom it is given to dwell in that fair city, the favorite abode of everything that goes to make life happy and content. Verse 22 Api Satya Pratiknena Sardam Kushalena Vayam Nivritte Samehi Asmin Sukita Pravishe Mahi. Can we ever re enter Ayodhya happily after safely fulfilling the vow and completing the term of exile? The inner meaning is this. Do you think that Dashrata would keep his hold on life till we return from our exile? Do you think that we would be fortunate enough to touch the feet of the Great One? Do you think that we would enter the portals of Ayodhya after our sojourn in the forest as my brother has vowed, safe and happy, our sire's promises well kept? Verse 23 Paridevaya manasya tasya evam su mahatmanaha tishthato raja putrasya sharvarisa atyavartata. While the high minded prince was lamenting this way, the night passed off. Verse 24. Prabhate vimale surye karayitya jata ubhau. Asmin bhagirati tire sukham samtaritau maya. The next day, Rama and Lakshmana matted their hair as became the hermits of the forest. My people saw to it that they crossed the river Ganga safely on a very comfortable barge. Verse 25. Jatad harau tau druma chira vasasau Mahabalau kunjara yutapa upamau Vara ishu chapa asid harau param tapau Vyavikshamanau sahasitaya gatau Rama and Lakshmana are the slayers of enemies. They are strong as bull elephants with their hair matted and wearing robes made of bark, armed with excellent bows, arrows and swords, they went along with Sita, looking around quite vigilantly. 
So in very small jest, Guha narrates all the key points that Lakshmana had specified almost a month ago. And he also says that after the night passed, Rama, Sita and Lakshmana crossed the river Ganga. Guha mentions that he watched them pass on towards the woods, armed and alert, their keen looks taking in every detail on their way. After this, Guha was not part of the journey, although he knows what happened to them because he had spies that told Guha that uh, Ram, Sita and Lakshmana were with Sage Bharadwaja and so on and so forth. In this chapter, Guha concludes the narrative by discussing how Rama, Sita and Lakshmana spent that one night in Shringavirpur and the next morning they crossed River Ganga. Mangalam Koshlendraya Mahaniya Gunabdeya Chakravarti Dhanurjaya Sarva Bhaumaya Mangalam.